And hello, my name is Jonathan Wilkins, and today I would like to talk to you about how to use a Strong's Concordance. Now, first of all, we need a, uh, a word to look up, so we are going to open this Bible. This one's a, a used one. And we're going to pick a passage. Let's see. What's a good passage? How about Exodus 16.1? I like that passage. Uh, see, and it's the, the word I prepared earlier. Okay, Exodus 16. So you're going along and you're studying the Bible and you come across as Exodus 16.1 and you read, and they took their journey from Elim. And you're thinking, journey? I wonder what the, the, the original word for journey is. So, you turn to your Strong's Concordance. And remembering, we are in Exodus chapter 16. First one, and we want to look up the word journey. So, we are going to get out our Strong's Concordance of the Bible. There we go. And make sure yours is keyed to the same version of the Bible you're using. Uh, that was a King James Bible, so this is going to be a Strong's Concordance of the Bible for the King James. They also make them for the NIV and the various other translations. If you get a mismatch of your version, your Bible you're studying, and the version of the Strong Concordance, that can cause some issues because some of the words are different. All right, what is a Strong's Concordance? Well, James Strong, uh, the author, went through and he listed all the words in the Bible and grouped them together. Let's see. Um, if you open it up, here's the main concordance. Uh, for example, here's the word Aaron. That's a little hard to see, but they make these, to fit all this information, and they make this text a little small. Anyway, there's Aaron, and it lists every verse with the word Aaron in it. And there are quite a few. Aaron's talked a lot about. Okay, but we want the word journey. Now, alongside mine and most other um, strong concordances, you have these markings. Uh, that's for the letter A, the next spot's B, C, D, E, and so on. Just like uh, some Bibles and some dictionaries used to have. C, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. That should be J. Ah, and it is. Now, once you get further on in the alphabet, uh, you can't really see Q's line. I believe that's that's R right there, and Q's somewhere. Yeah. So once you get toward the end, it's harder to use it. But let's see. We want the word journey. How do you spell journey? J O U. Oh, 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 oh. There's journeying. And there's journeyed. Ah, here's journey. Okay. So now you found the word you want to look up. So how do I find the word I want to look up? Well, you'll see here. Here is a partial quote from the from the verse in question. Um, he had made his J prosperous or not. Uh, typically, and well, in every version of Strong's I've looked up, they take the word and they uh, reduce it to its first first letter, its initial letter. So uh, he had made his journey prosperous or not. Then you have a bunch of dots. Then you have a verse, a scripture reference here, Genesis twenty four twenty one. Then you have a number off to the side. Okay, well, first up, we need to find Exodus 16.1. Let's see, Genesis, Exodus, Exodus 16.1. And to verify, make sure I got the right verse, we can read. Uh, and they took their J, or journey, from Elim. Elim. Uh, okay, so yep, that's it. That's the Gen Exodus 16.1 we're looking for. Now, this number off to the side is important. 5265. I'm going to write that down. Uh, let's see. 5265. That's the number we want to look up. Okay. So Exodus is in the Old Testament. The Old Testament was originally written primarily in Hebrew. There are a few Aramaic spots, but primarily in Hebrew. So we need to look up in the Hebrew dictionary what, uh, where was it? What number 5265 is. All right. So if you go to the back, and you have all your letters and the continuation up here. Then you have these three three dots here. Sorry, that was out of frame. That one's 
an appendix, we'll get there. This one is a Hebrew dictionary. Yeah, Strong's, or new, this is the new Strong's. The new Strong's concise dictionary of the words of the Hebrew Bible. Because we're in the Old Testament, we want to use the Hebrew dictionary. And when we go to the New Testament, we'll use the Greek dictionary. It's an important thing to remember when you're looking up words and you can't find it or doesn't match up, you might be in the wrong dictionary. Anyway, our number, um, 5265. So, oh, and here's information on how to read it. Special symbols and some of the abbreviations. And we start off with the letter Aleph, which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And it starts with one. And you see two, three, four, five. Well, we need 5265. There's 500. There's 14. 23. Uh, we're getting there. 51. Let's see. We need 5265. There's 54. I've passed it. There's 52. The page ends in 5224. That's off frame, so you can't see that. Uh, oh, there it is. 5264. Can you read that? 5264. Now, it's going to give you the word in Hebrew. And, wow, that font's so small, I can't read it sitting here. I don't know if you're going to be able to make that out on the camera, but trust me, it's there in Hebrew letters. Then it has a pronunciation guide. Then it has it uh, spelled out like we would pronounce it in English. The word is nasa, nasa, nasa. Oh, no, so, I'm sorry, nasas, nasas, nasas. There we go. Wow. The, the font's too small. I have my hard time reading that. All right. But it's Nassas. And then it's going to give you a little information. Nassas. A prim root or a primary root to gleam from afar. That's wrong because I'm looking for 5265. There we go. 5265. Nassa. 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 There we go. I figured I was pronouncing it wrong, because I was on the wrong word. Always check your words, because once you get in here and say, that doesn't make sense, you probably picked the wrong number, like I did. Well, we need 5265. Now, this one's also a primary root, properly, to pull up, especially the tent pins, i.e., uh, Latin, it est, that is, start on a journey. Cause to blow, bring, get, make, go, go, go forth, go on, go onward, out, take, take a journey, march, remove, set aside, forward, still, be on, or go their way. Now, general rule of thumb when looking at dictionaries and lexicons and things of that nature, the further down you get, the more derived senses you get. So, try to get your definition from the first from the first line or two, or the early portion of this, um, we call them articles oftentimes, so this little definition, try to get it from the top, because that's more the root meaning of the word. Uh, properly to pull up, especially the tent pens. So when Moses and the children of Israel began their journey, the idea of the journey there is to, uh, to pull up. So they pulled up their tent pens and went. And that gives it just a little more flavor than our English word journeyed. Uh, so that's one way you can help to study, to get a little more depth of the, uh, of the meaning of the words. So we've looked up our, a uh, Greek word, a Greek word, Hebrew word. Let's put away our concordance for a moment and bring back our Bible. Let's look up a Greek word. Let's see. First Greek. The New Testament was written in Greek handful of Latinisms in there, but it's it's Greek. Let's see. Hmm. How about we look up Matthew chapter 9, verse 1. And he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. I want to know more about that word ship. Ship. S-H-I-P. So, I'm going to go and get my Strong's Concordant back out. And I'm going to look up the word ship. Let's see. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, 
L M N O P Q R S. Oh, and it was. And there's ship high. Uh, let's see. If you're curious, Shippai or Shifi was the father of Zaza in First Chronicles uh, 437. Okay, let's see. Ah, here we go, ship. That was easy. Sometimes you'll open it right up to it. Sometimes you'll search for a while for the words. It's much like using a dictionary or an encyclopedia. If you've ever used a paper one, I know that's becoming rarer. All right, ship. And what was the... The uh, passage we wanted, Matthew 9, 1. Okay, so, you know, here there's used in Proverbs and Jonah, Matthew. Matthew 4, 21, Matthew 4, 22, 8, 8, 9, 1. And he entered into a ship and passed. Matthew 9, 1, and its number is 41, 43. I'm going to write that one down as well. 41, 43. 41, 43. All right, ship there so I don't confuse myself later on. Um, I recommend you write down the numbers and, and the words so once you get looking up, you remember, it's a 4143 or 4134. And you can look up and say, ah, oh, there's 4143. All right, so now we're going to go to the back. Once again, let's see. Can I open it? Oh, I came close. This time, because... It we're in the New Testament, we want to use Strong's Concise Dictionary of the Words in the Greek Testament with their renderings in the King James Version. That's going to vary depending on what version uh, you're working from. And once again, like the Hebrew portion, it gives you how to, how to use this dictionary. Um, it gives an example there. Uh, it gives some uh, abbreviations, and here's the uh, Greek alphabet. Let's see, special symbols and notes, and just like in the the Greek, or Greek, the Hebrew, we start off with the first letter, one. Well, alpha, but uh, we also start off with the number one. Except we need 4,143, so we're going to be flipping for a little while. It's a thousand, there's 26, 33... Uh, let's see, where am I? Oh, 38. There's 4,100, but we need 4,143. The page ends at 4,108, so it's going to be on this page, I imagine. 41, 41, 41,43. There we go. 41,43. And as your Greek word there, it has a, a, um, a pronunciation help and it explains all that in the front of the dictionary. Then it has a easier pronunciation help. Ployon. Ployon. For those of you who have been following along by learning New Testament Greek, at least through chapter 7 vocabulary, you should know the word ployon. Ployon. Uh, it's from 4126, which means a sailor. Uh, that is, it's related to this word. So the word sailor and the word ship are related, which kind of makes sense. Uh, let's see. I.e., that is, or it is, vessel, a ship. And I also say ping, so apparently the word ployon can be used in the idea of shipping, or possibly a shipping vessel. Um, be careful when they have these little inserts. Uh, they don't mean sailor that is a vessel. They mean the, the little comma there is telling you we're going back to the main point here. So it Related to uh, 4126, a sailor, but the primary meaning of ployon is vessel or a ship. All right, so we got ployon, a vessel or a ship. And that makes sense because he went into a ployon, a ship. Okay, let's see. What's it up? Oh, I want one more word before we, we call it a day. I want to look up the word and. And. A-N-D. As I imagine, there are going to be a handful of uses of the word and. Amen, Amorites, Angel, Angel, okay. Anakim, Anakims. So and's got to be in here somewhere. And. And. See Appendix. 
And it doesn't give me any numbers or scriptures or anything because it goes straight into Andrew. Appendix. Okay, so where's the appendix? It's somewhere near the near the colon, I believe. No, no, no. Uh, the appendix of the book. Appendices or appendixes are usually in the back. And here we go. Right after Z in our in our words, we have the appendix of articles, conjunctions, prepositions, etc. And you see, we have a word. Well, actually, that's a letter and a word. And you have a whole bunch of tiny little text. But we're looking for and. There's an. And. There we go. All right, where is it used? Well, see all these here? All these are all the verses the word and in the King James Version of the Bible is found. Um, Genesis 1, 1, 2 is found four times. 3 is found two. The little parentheses tell you how many times in the, in the verse. Um, and that is some tiny text to get all this in. I doubt you'll be able to, to read it uh, at all. Okay, let's see. So you got Genesis. Down here, you see Exodus. So from here to here, Including all this, all those are the uses of the word and in Genesis. And Strong sat down, I imagine with a team of researchers, and recorded every time the word and was used. And it goes on for a couple pages. Okay. Yep. Oh no, that wasn't the end. We're just a Song of Solomon now. There's Haggai. There's Mark. Uh, occasionally you'll see a couple letters or abbreviation in bold. It's easier to pick out your me looking at it than it is on the camera, I think. But, yeah, there's there's Romans and Revelation. Jude doesn't use it many times at all. It's only got a, what, a line and a quarter. But these are all the uses of the word and. So if you're thinking, well, I can't remember if they used and in Romans 1-4. Well, if you go look up Romans 1-4, they did. So, but words in here, this is a um, debatable usage. But let's see. Uh, no. Okay. And that is the tiny words, little words. So if you see an appendix, that means you there's a lot of them. Uh, lots of uses, and Strong's Concordance might not be particularly useful in, in that case if you're doing a word study. All right, so we looked up, or we saw how to look up a word in Hebrew, or in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew Dictionary. We looked up one in the New Testament, in the Greek Dictionary, and we looked up the word and um, in the appendix, which I'll leave that up to you to determine its value. So now you know how to use a Strong's Concordance, and it's one of the most valuable tools you'll have in your uh, study of the scriptures. Alright, have a good one.